Hello, Aqua here. Welcome to episode 47 of my Feed the Beast Beginner's Guide. Now, what we've got to do today, I've got a couple of issues that I need to deal with. Um, I'll quickly go through what the issues are first. I'm going to go kill another Wither in a minute just to, uh, just so I've got another nether star and to make sure I don't blow the walls up again. Right, the first issue I've got is this here putting bees into the dream pool. It puts them in the top, from the top it puts them straight into this slot. So once it's full, it doesn't fill this up, and it keeps sending bees in, and uh, they, they get annihilated, I think, because there's nowhere for them to go. So um, I need to be careful with that. I can only really send it when it needs work, where I can fill this up. So I don't really need to send any bees at the minute. So I've turned that apiary uh, alvey under there off for a second. Another issue was with this. And my tank now says it's full. This filled up. So this filled up right with two stacks of phosphorus for every stack of sand, so that's perfect. The only problem is, is this didn't turn off. So I probably need to make a longer thing here with um, some pipe wiring, which I don't think I've shown yet. You can have an autarkic gate on the output end and uh, just an iron gate on the input. And you can use the input gate to set a condition that sets a red pipe wire on. And you can get the autarkic to react to the red pipe wire. So I don't think I've shown you that. I probably should show you that. It's uh, it's quite an important thing to do with the gates. So I shall get on with that. If not not this episode. I'll get it set up for the next. But we need to do something different with that. That's not working as it is. Because that didn't turn off. It's uh, it's looking for It was looking for space in inventory. And I don't know if it's classing that as space in inventory. Or if it's classing that as space in inventory. But whatever it was, it wasn't turning off. So it's no good, that's no good, that self was no good. But what we have done was we've filled up the tank down there, the lava. So if we just jump down there, I've also moved a lot of my bees. Not all of them, I was in the process of doing it, but it's getting a bit late, I want to start the episode. Um, I've only got, I've actually got no bees left out here. Oops, I've got, I've got um, an alvary left out here, and then a bit of that alvary. I've took that one to bits for now, but I'll be putting that back together, me breeding one. But they're all downstairs. It's exactly the same setup as upstairs, really, uh, as, as it was out there, should I say. Uh, I'm in a little hole here with a ladder. So, as you can see, I've got eight B, eight alivaries across the back there. Lapis, refined, refined, valuable, emerald, demonic, uh, farmed, valiant, and radioactive up to now. And they're all going... They're all getting fed from one router. The frames are all getting fed from one router here. That's got a test wrapped underneath. Oops. Feeding the frames. Fall into the void there. Um, test wrapped underneath, feeding the frames. That's nice and straightforward. So that's obviously linked by these chests. And it's got the machine filter in there, of course. So it's only putting frames only into the frame I was into nowhere else. So that's all good. Uh, I've connected it to this side at that end there. I've got a tesseract there feeding into the ME network. So all the bits are going into there. Really nice and straightforward and it's totally expandable of course. I can have um, one gap and I can do another two banks if I wanted to. So that's 16. I could get a lot of bees down here. Once, well this will be 16 once I've, once I've met them all. Um, if you see this tank's full as I was saying upstairs. That means I can turn this on now. So this is lava from the nether. And uh, I want that to react. So I want that enabled low yet. And I want that to receive only. So if this tank, if I run out of demonic bees, if, sorry, should I say, if I run out of phosphor getting made by the demonic bee, so the demonic bee there is... Mm, it's not an, it's not an outside bee. Okay, most of the bees are found down here because they're bred from rocky bees. The, these demonic wasn't, so I actually need to check what the issue is there. They need to have the. So I've actually had to change the flowers because the flowers were flowers. I had to change that to rock. And it looks like I'm also going to have to make it cave dwelling as well. Right up. So that needs to go back upstairs for now. Um, all the rest of the bees are bred from rockies which are cave dwelling, which means they're fine in here. And I don't need any flowers either because they've all got rock as pollination. So that's also fine. So it's using rocky bees, another good thing, you can just move into a basement somewhere out of the way. So Because they do take quite, take quite a lot of space, do bees. So I'm going to put, um, for now, I'm going to put my demonic 
in there because I just want it to die quick. They're chocolate frames, so that should kill that pretty quick. Because I want the I want a separate princess and uh, drone, of course. And I'm gonna have to put that through the synthesizer and the purifier because that's empty. But I kept a I kept a cave dwelling serum just in case. There's a rock pollination that I just I just use on that the one it be. So I'll fill that up, I'll give that quick cave dwelling, and that'll be alright. All the rest I find down there, because as like I say, there is all from Rocky Bees. Alright, uh, you see, you spread that out pretty well. I can start adding more bees to the mix. Um, these are all the bees I had producing. So I've got two refined. I could do with another valuable. Get some more iridium. Um, I could do with a gold bee as well, probably. Get some gold on the go. I, I could really, I can mean I could use all the metals. You can pretty much make everything apart from quartz as far as I know and especially with things getting added as well so there's things getting added all the time there's probably going to be a quartz one as well by the time um, we get to 1.5 I should be talking about 1.5 a little bit I've had a little go on creative yesterday I've uh, I've checked out the MFR rednet I've um, checked out a few things this might get me some dislikes but they are being a bit I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to not have a go at the FTB guys but they are being a little slow with it it's, especially when you consider that there's quite a few of the FTB forum members who've made their own packs so they're just people playing. Um, feed the beast. It's easy to to expect them to be more than they are because the website and the forum and the launches all looks very professional. So you kind of expect it to be a professional outfit. But I think they're just gamers who uh, who made a mod pack. You know what I mean? You've got to give them a bit of a bit of leeway sometimes. That it's probably not as professional as it looks because. It looks very professional because I've got a really good setup. I've got a really good uh, website and launcher and that. But uh, give, maybe give them a bit of slack. They're not. Uh, they haven't done it as quick as a lot of the community members have. A lot of the community members have med mod packs, server server side and stuff like that. One point five point two. That um, that are a lot more fleshed out than the current if the beast beater is. So uh, I think there could be a bit further on than they are. But um, it's. I say they're not getting paid for it. It's, uh, it's people doing this as a hobby, so fair play to them for doing it in the first place. Uh, I'd like to get onto a 1.5 server, but I'm, I'm happy waiting. I'm going to see my mate who owns our server and see if he's there. Uh, I'll have a chat with him, see if he fancies putting a server together, because I know plenty of people have done it. Right, let's kill this with her. Let's see if he blows the, fl the wall apart. I've moved it one away from the wall this time. If he blows a button off the wall, I could be in trouble. Okay, things seem safe. Took a little bit of damage there. Got my, uh, my food in full. Come on, die please, sir. There we go. Second nether start. So that's the, uh, that's the, that's all the wither skulls I had, I only had six, because I've not had the wither skeleton spawner 10 on much really. But I just wanted to make sure that, so you see there, instead of doing it right up against the side, I did it one block in, and it didn't do any damage to any of the surrounding area, so that's good to know. So before I had it right up against the edge of the force field and it destroyed this wall if you remember. So that's good. Uh, what I've done here, by the way, is... Yeah, the toggle switch I had wrong. That's why I was rushing. Um, what I've done is the toggle switch puts input on from a side. So you have where the red line's going through it, the circuit. You want the output to be either side of that, but you want the input to actually feed into where the red line is. That makes sense. So I was trying to feed it from the side, from from the wrong bit. So there, as you can see. Because the receiver's feeding to the side, that'll flip the switch, which will either have this side turned on or this side turned on. So, of course, when this side turned on, then the force field's on. When this side's turned on, it's not. So, that's all good. So, I'll just move that down there. It's a bit easier to do it down there than it was to do it in the wall up here and keep it tidy. And, um, I obviously, I didn't have to have it as a button up here. And if I just wanted to keep it nice and nice and tight. So, there we go. That's uh, that's that bit done. So, what I said I was going to do last time is have a look what we can make with these nether stars. Uh, I'm going to put a chest there. At some point we can put loads of soul sand in there with the skulls in there. So we've got quick access when we need them. It's, uh, just while well, I mentioned this, so uh, this is still producing. It's producing as it needs it. So our 
our um, solar, our thermal generators upstairs are not taking as much lava as that as that squeeze is producing. That'll probably run out eventually when I get the when it catches up. Cause I don't think it maybe does. I don't know, I don't think one B is going to produce enough phosphor to keep to keep up with that. But there was a massive backlog, so these are using less than that squeezer can manage, which is pretty cool. So at some point. I could expand these, have more of these, or I could, um, and then I might need a second squeezer, oh I could have a second bees, I can always expand it all on that, I don't want to do too much for lava, but at least I'm using bee lava rather than never lava now, which is, never lava is a, is a bit cheap, but it's really useful to uh, get started with. Another issue I've got, just before we get into the never star stuff, is if you look at the amount of combs I'm producing now, we're getting backlogged with quite a lot of stuff. Obviously, two refined bees is giving me loads of oily and petroleum combs. We're getting backlogged because we've got two centrifuges here that are working full time. At some point, what I need to do is make a bank of centrifuges with a router on either end. The, um, the factorization router will be really good for that. And what that will let us do is uh, you can f feed it all in from a router at one end and then they'll just slot into, as long as you've got the right upgrades on the router, you need a thing called a uh, thoroughness upgrade. Um, and a bandwidth upgrade. Bandwidth does stacks at a time and thoroughness does it so that it fill one centrifuge before it goes to the next. So if you got without the thoroughness, if say if you had nine centrifuges with a router at this end, without thoroughness it'd put one into each. Even though if you can move stacks. If if these were coming in like three or four at a time, it'd move a stack of three or four at a time in but it'd still feed all the machines and fill all the separate centrifuges off. With thoroughness and bandwidth, so if it was feeding it four at a time, four would go in there, then another four would go in there, then let's then keep putting them in as long as the other combs are going to this one. I believe that's how it works. That's, that would keep it a bit tighter. Um, I'd say maybe get five or six of them in a row. Uh, everything. The problem I've got now is everything that I need to make, I need to break things because I've got no room. Which is kind of ironic because I've got loads of room. I've just got probably a bad layout that doesn't let me use the room as I should. Um, right. So, Nether Stars. Let's have a look. Pressure you on there. What are these going to? Well, the first thing is a beacon. That's a vanilla thing. Obsidian glass and a Nether Star. So, uh, Nether Stars are vanilla, of course, because of course withers are vanilla. Um, the beacon's pretty cool. You need to put it on a pyramid of blocks. It can either be iron gold, emerald or diamond and the bigger the pyramid the bigger the range of the buffs that the beacon gives out so you can set the beacon to give buffs it can have regen or um, speed or mining speed stuff like that and depending on the size of the, py well, the block pyramid you put underneath it depends it gives out the buff on more of a range and you can have more than one buff I think if it's on the biggest so that's uh, a vanilla item, a vanilla thing you can use it for I'm not going to bother with that um, I've made one then before. I made one on my Farmcraft tower when I was last on the main server with the guys. Um, just because it looks pretty cool. I had it as the roof of the tower. I had a big diamond block pyramid because I was lit. I was end game, so I had loads of diamonds. So I thought, what, why not? Uh, the next in there, that's part of computer craft mist peripherals, I believe. Advanced nuclear information reader. That's something I don't touch because I don't really into coding with Lua. As you probably have noticed, um, so that's from the Myth Peripherals mod, which is the Richard G mod that adds loads of computer craft, loads of turtle stuff. So I won't ever be touching that because that's not something I'd use, and I don't use nuclear reactors anyway. So that's something we don't need to look at. Next thing, gravity gun. I've never made a gravity gun. I should make one of them. Yeah, I've never actually made one. That's a supercharged one. Okay. Or in the pearls. I might make one of them in a minute. Um, next in there, miniature black hole. Miniature black hole is an ingredient for the portal gun. And then these last two here, these are from the Xenos Reliquary mod. You can make a thing there with four never stars that wither this rose. That means you can't be withered when you're fighting with us, which is pretty cool. And then the last thing there is you can use one nether star, a thing called a term of alkahest that's got quite a um, quite a heavy recipe itself. It's got certain things from the nether that you need. In fact most of the things there are from the nether aren't they apart from the book. 
technically the lava bucket and the gold, but all the rest of the stuff there is from the nether. So you get loads of stuff from the nether, put it together, you get a term of Alkahest. Never made one of them either. Um, oh, pressed the wrong button there. Should have pressed backspace. So what that does is, using one nether star, you can make another nether star. But that's actually a lot more hard than killing a nether, if you ask me. It uses the same amount of wither skulls as actually killing a wither. Now we've got a safe place to kill them down there. It's actually cheaper just to kill the wither rather than spend a diamond and some glowing water. So we won't be using either of them to either. So really, all I've got to make is either the miniature black hole or the gravity gun. Miniature black hole, as I said, goes into a portal gun. There you go, there's the recipe for a vanilla portal gun. Now there's different types of portal guns, which I'm going to get on to. The other thing you can go into is portal spawners. These are pretty cool. These are like fixed portals, so I'm going to make one of them. And I'm going to make... A gravity gun. So there's my two nether stars, that's what they're going to go into. Um, right, so enderpearl dust. We need to pulverize some enderpearls. I've got, I've, got, I've got a little bit of that, I don't think I've got enough. I've got six, look. I need to grab one of these. How do I... Uh, how do I make that into dust? The right kind of dust. Just smell it, do I? There's two types of dust, you see. There's, there's the... Um, there's that dust with the chemical formula underneath, that's for the Greg Tech stuff, for making beryllium cells. And then there's that dust, that doesn't have the... That doesn't have the thing. You see that one there, one enderpearl makes one of that kind of type of dust, whereas one enderpearl here makes eight of that type. So we're not actually pulverizing it, we need to cook it. So that's the difference there. One of them, you cook it. One of them, you pulverize it. So the one way you're going for is the cooked version. So that should put us them in there. So let's surround that. So there's our miniature black hole. Cool. Get rid of them. So, and what was the other thing? It was a uh, gravity gun. Let's make a gravity gun. Oops. Oh, of course, that's just shape crafting. You can also use it to make, um, no idea what that is. <laughs> but that's an expensive recipe, isn't it? Two other stars and a dragon egg. Makes, makes you that thing. Bizarre. Um, holy planks of Sengir. That's a bit of an Easter egg kind of thing. Um, Sengir, the forestry modder, once said on a post, you can tell Greg Tech's involved when making planks cost nether stars and a dragon egg. So Greg put that in. So you can actually make that. It's got smite 10. So I don't know if you can actually use that to, to bash with us. So, okay, that's it then. Just, just some of the two recipes there that we didn't look at before. Yeah, I should have more of a look into that at some point, but uh, I'm not going to bother for now. So, oops. So, let's make a gravity gun. Gravity gun is a bit like a portal gun. Where is it gone? Um, four obsidian, diamond, two iron. Okay, two iron. And one, two, three, four. One diamond. And... One obsidian. Now this is a super chat. I don't really know much about this mod to be honest. The, the one that adds the gravity gun. Let's have a quick look at it. Let's see what else it adds. Mod. Now is it its own mod? It looks like it's his own mod. There's a gravity gun there. Okay that takes a bit of glowstone in space of that. To make that supercharge you need to get struck by lightning. You can do that quite cheaply by making a twilight forest portal. Throwing a diamond in there. So it costs you a diamond to do it that way, but um, you can get caught out in the in the run. Hopefully, you get struck by lightning, or you can just make it use another star. And I glowstone is a lot cheaper, but we might as well use another star. We've got nothing else to use it for at the minute. Oh, there is something else actually you can use it for that I've not shown you. Uh, what should I do here? What should I do? I might actually compress that glowstone into glow, into a glowstone block and make the cheap version. We'll see what the cheap version's like. I should actually look at what the mod does to be honest. Uh, compressor. That should make a block. There we go. So there's the two types of gravity gun. The supercharged or the normal. I'm going to make the normal because there's just one more There's one more thing we can use another star for that um, I didn't show you because it's not in any eye. And we can go look at that, and that is if we grab our thermonomicron off there and look in it. Once we've completed the research for the theory of everything, there we go. 
you can take your one of the adepts, come back to another star, cost 250 viz and some magic, and that gets you the one of the thaumaturge, which is the one that holds a thousand V. So that's how you get your upgrade for your wand to the biggest one. We've got the one there that holds 250, the adept. If you remember the starter wand or the um, the apprentice holds 50, the adept holds 250, and then the thaumaturge holds a thousand. So we could use it for that. Just while I'm here, what I meant by the, the Twilight Portal, we haven't been in the Twilight Forest for ages. Remember, when we made that, we threw a diamond into a square of water with some um, flowers round. Let's see if this works. It's a bit cheaty, but let's uh, break that. It's going to cost me a diamond, but I want to see if this actually works. Put the flower back. So let's make the cheap gravity gun. Get on our bar there. I don't even know what the damn thing does, to be honest. It picked, I know it picks things up, but uh, I don't know how it works. No idea how it works. You can put pay, you can pay, uh, pick players up with it and stuff. That's probably limited to the supercharged one. Oops. Shit, yeah, you can pick things up with it. Um, <laughs> let's pick that chest up, okay. So, I don't recommend you doing it this way. This is a bit of a cheeky way of doing it. I'm showing you for the sake of showing yet. So with the gravity gun in my hand, I guess throwing a diamond in there. And see that supercharged now because I've just got struck by lightning. So that's made that into the Nether Portal version, the Nether Star version of the gun because I got struck by lightning. So it saves that saves you a, a Nether Star. Now of course, what's really cheeky about this is. I could now go to my own crafting table and I can get a nether star back. So you can actually cheat nether stars that way. Which is why I don't particularly like it. I'm sure that should be done. If that hasn't been fixed, I'm sure it will be, but um so that I could take that apart now and I've gained I've gained a nether star there from not for nothing really. Because you get all the other bits back as well. So well, cost of a diamond, you can get another star. Right, uh, I'm going to break the camera there because I'm going to actually go look at the gravity gun mod and see what it does for us because I've no idea how to use it or what it does and if I'm trying to teach you I should really know, shouldn't I? So, back in a little while when I've uh, had a look at that. Okay, I'm back and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I just want to show about all the things it does but pretty much right button will pull entities or blocks towards you and then grab them. Like so. And then the left button throws them away. Or you can just push blocks back, uh, push entities back with the left button, like so. So that'll knock it back. And you can pick players up with this. I'm not sure if you need the supercharged one for the players. Apparently, the supercharged one just lets you throw them further. Um, but I'd say it might be it might be needed to do players. I'm not sure. You can mare the sheep in funny ways. <laughs> it's a bit cruel, but you know. Wee. And it does blocks as well. Look, pull a block towards you, then pick it up throw blocks away. So where'd that end up? That sheep survived. Well done sheep. Stuck up a tree now. We'll probably know eight points left but you know. Um, so yeah quite quite a fun little thing. I don't think um, it's more of a fun mod than that. One of iTunes mods. iTunes has a lot of fun stuff like um, the I think the hats mod that you've probably seen is iTunes and um, the trail mix one with the flying pigs and shit like that. And of course the portal mod which is what we're we'll looking at for the rest of this episode. So let's get back into somewhere normal. Um, I'll put that other spare nether star up there for now. It's out of the way. Uh, I wonder if the portal stand works with this. There's a stand. Let's have a look at the portal mod, actually. Portal mod's actually quite good. Most people don't use a lot of it. And um, we go portal gun. Let's have a look. So there's quite a few things to it if you look there. There's uh, a lot more than people normally use. First of all, let's talk about the guns real quick. Of course, I've had a portal gun since the very first episode of this series, because I found one in a chest. And it's just a standard default portal gun. Now, this is fine on a single player, but on a server, because this is a default portal gun, the blue and orange is shared. You can upgrade your portal gun. There's, there's several versions. Look, there's default, Atlas, Peabody's, Bacon, Potato. So. That's all of that's all the left click colour and then it's the same again but that's all the right click colour, yeah? Makes sense? So each one's got I don't know what that one is. 
at the end there. What's that one? No recipe for that end one there, so... And then you can smelt them to get them back to... The, the upgraded ones, you craft them by um, adding bits to them, or you can get them back to normal by smelting them, I believe. So if you put them in a mixer, it crafts it. If I press U on the actual upgraded one, it'll show me nothing. I think you can get them back to default anyway. So you actually make the default one and all the rest. You actually, so the, the Atlas one there, you had a blue dye. Yellow dye for the Peabody's. Bacon, you had a raw pork chop. And the potato, you had this thing called potatoes or potatoes. Um, if you remember the computer out of portals called GLaDOS, so I think that's what the OS there represents. And the potato is some vanilla redstone repeaters and some other stuff. Um, these last two, the bacon gun and the potato gun, they're private to you as far as you understand. I think it's just them two, it might be more, but they're private to you. So if if you was on a server and you had the default one and your mate did, Whenever he put the blue, click the blue side, like we've got a blue portal there, it'd get rid of your blue portal because it's shared. Should be a bit of a ball ache. But yeah, the upgraded ones are quite easy to upgrade. Maybe a little bit fit well, a bit of bacon's thingy, but potato ones maybe a little bit fiddly. That one actually talks to you as well, so that's kind of worth doing. Um, them two are private, so that if you had them set up, and you may have the same gun, it wouldn't take away your portals. So that's pretty good to know. The other useful thing here is, of course, the portal spawner. So let's make, some, let's make that. This comes as a pair. So it takes one miniature black hole, so one nether star, but you get a pair of these. That's pretty cool. So a couple of diamonds. And was it just four iron? One, two, three, four. There we go, portal spawner. Now what this does, this is pretty cool. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go to sleep first. So it's daytime. And um, what you can do with this, this is placeable. Like so. And that becomes a permanent one. And if you click on it, you see which colour do you want it. Now, I think with the spawners, these are all private. I'm not. Sure, I, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that won't share them. But um, I'm not 100% sure, actually. Let's, let's uh, have that as orange. So that's set that to orange and portal closed with redstone powers cut. No, you can change that to yes or no. We'll set that to the vanilla orange, so that's the same as that one. Yeah, and we'll see if I put a lever to that because it needs a redstone signal just to fire it up. Yeah, look, it's taking that one away, so it does share them. So you need to, if you're using portal spawners, you need to use a colors that you've not got guns for. That makes sense. So now if we go through there, we'll still get back out of this side, and we can use our gun. Let's just, uh, press G, no, is it G, it's R. So press R, that's got rid of that. But because we've got a portal spawn at the other end, if we set this to the blue, like it was, and get out that other lever, like so, And I cancelled the other end because I cancelled it still. Bugger. So um, I have to fly back to the other end for a minute. And left me door open there so zombies could get in when I'm not looking. Oh, creepers. Dangerous. Let's turn that on again. So I'm pressing the clear button on the portal could actually clear it even though it was on a portal spawner. So that's uh, worth doing as well. So there we go, they're on portal spawners now, but if I still use the gun, it still gets rid of that. There you go. But if I use a different colour, let's turn that on again. Now, I suppose the easiest way of making it a different colour is upgrading the portal gun. Um, but I won't do that, what I'm going to do is I am going to change this. So that's, because I set it to no, that it doesn't turn off when the signals cut then that'll still that'll stay turned on what you can do is a little elaborate system with pressure plates and um wireless redstone so that the the doors only open when you want them to which is uh probably good for lag and security if you're on a server um you can have it you can use the arcane pressure plate from found craft only you can trigger it people could dig up the floor and stuff of course but um what should we do with this let's Let's get rid of it. 
Now, I think if you shift, no, no, I thought if you shift click it actually gets rid of the thing rather than the block behind it, but obviously not the case. Now I've got a mucky cobble block there. Brr. Um, let's put that there and let's pick a different colour. So I'm going to use a potato one. So blue potato there. In fact, I'm going to use yes and blue potato there. So now they've put that on. It's the blue version of the potato gun, which is each, each have a different colour. If I turn that off, it actually shuts it down again. So I need to go back to the other end, get the other end set up. I can actually use my portal gun now because the other end's still set to that. As you can see. Now, I'm sure there was a way of getting rid of just that without bricking the block behind it, but I can't remember. I think there is a way of getting the spawn the back without bricking what's behind it, but never mind. And I didn't want to do that at all. What happened there? Eh. Come on. Is that because. I know why that's because. Oops. Shit. Cocking things up like a boss. Eh. Uh, that would probably be because that was turned on, I guess. So let's do that again. And now right click on it. We want yes and we want the potato gun second version. So that one. So now I can turn that on. And that'll take us here. Like I can see you can automate this. Because it turns on and off. Uh, I use my portal gun there. Let's um let's keep that orange one there because then I can when I travel anywhere I can just get the portal gun out and I've got a quick way back. But I'll use that one let's this permanent one then to get in and out of my base. Well to get from one base to the there. And now we can set the blue one anywhere if we wanted to. Say if I'm doing a lot of work down in the basement. I can um set the blue one wherever I want. I can just get back upstairs a bit quicker by dicking about going through them. Um you know. Cool. So that's uh kind of gravity gun that's that's a look at the portal spawner part of that really useful portal spawner and what else can we make there unnamed i guess that ready yet there's a thing called a uh, material emancipation grid that's meant to kill stuff that goes past it but that's unfinished and not used that's been like that for months um long four boots pretty good early game boots they're, they're quite expensive though two diamonds they need to make two for a pair so it's four diamonds but you can fall any height from them and not take any damage from fall damage so uh, they're sometimes worth making. Storage cubes are kind of funky. The one there with the heart. Now you make these. You make that stone and, and um, an iron ingot. And then if you put it on the floor and give it a flower. It turns into one with a heart there. And I think if that's in your inventory. It'll give you one heart, one heart of health back every few seconds. That's quite useful to know. Um, they're a bit weird. They just plop storage cubes out. Um, I've never used a high energy pellet launcher or catcher. Radio is quite cool. It just plays a um, it plays the tune on a loop, the portal tune, and then for that you need to make a music disc. And these are craftable music discs. There's two. There's a basic one there that you make one of these. In fact, screw it. Let's make one. Let's do it. Let's uh, put them up there for now. Let's go back upstairs. And I need some stone. So let's get some stone and. So my end. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That gets us the weight storage cube there. So if you push that, put that on the floor, you can push that around and stuff. A bit weird. You can pick it back up by hitting it a few times and you get it back. Like um, like a train cart, I suppose. Real cart. But no, what I do if I come out here, find a red flower. I think it has to be a red one, a rose. I'm sure I've got some significance if you played Portal. I never have. There you go. And now that thing now. I think if it's on my bar or in my inventory. I don't, know if, I don't know if it has to be on your bar or your inventory. We'll give you um, a bit of health back. So early game. People should really make them early game if it does do that. Uh, I don't know if you just have to be stood, have it placed and be stood near it. It maybe give you health back if you're near it. I'm not sure. Something like that anyway. 
It's been a while since I looked at the wiki for that. Um, next thing we can do with this then is if we smelt that, rotten bastards, that we are, that'll turn, turn that into a record. So we're going to need a jukebox, aren't we? Let's say. Uh, jukebox is just a diamond and wood, isn't it? It is a diamond and wood, I thought it was. And let's get that back there. Diamond. Strong that by wood. What's going on? Get away. Damn thing. And get our record we just made. And there we go. There's a the slow loud music that I'm sure you've all heard. Let's take that back out and smell it again, I believe. Is that right? Yep, smell it again. Becomes his second disc. Radio loop. So I thought there was, oh no, there was a third one. And then there's, if you put two of the first ones together, you get a third song called Want You Gone, which is another song from it. Now the radio loop one, put some anything that's wrong that. So a bit of a waste of the jukebox, but never mind. I apologise if I came my nephew crying downstairs. He's uh, getting forced to go for a nap and he's in happy about it. He's never happy about getting forced to go for a nap. He'll cry for a while, but he'll go to sleep. Always fights it. There you go. You can place the radio, it'll just keep playing that radio loop over and over again. Add a bit of light to your bass. And that, you can knock that about. Oops, you pick it up, but you can kind of push it about and stuff as well. Again, iTunes mods are all a bit funky, a bit weird like that. And what else have we got in this portal mod? Uh, of course, there's the sentry turrets. Now, the, central tur the sentry turrets, they have a chance of creating this. When you place them, I think there's like a 10% chance of it being one of these different ones. The effective doesn't work. Oracle doesn't shoot, I don't think. You can change these in the config to actually shoot players or not players or whatever. I've used these before, they're pretty cool. Pretty cheap as well. Redstone, iron, obsidian. You can make them quite early. Quite useful for base defence. Uh, you just maybe have to change the config just so they don't shoot you as well or your, or your mates if you're on a server. Uh, aerial faith plates are really cool. These don't get used nowhere near enough, to be honest. Um, I'm going to make one of them in a minute. First of all, let's make a portal gun pedestal. Obsidian, iron, redstone. You see, they're all pretty much the same materials that get used for all these things. Is it like that? Obsidian's down here somewhere. Oops. Portal gun pedestal. This looks pretty cool, especially when you place it, because uh, it comes up off the floor. Quite funky. Now let's see if we can actually put a gravity gun on there as well. We definitely can put a portal gun on there, but we probably can't put the gravity gun on there. No, I didn't think we would. Well, I thought it was worth checking. But right click here, stand with your portal gun, it'll sit on there, look quite nice. It'll like nice little addition to your base. But of course, I like to carry that around with me, so I won't be using that so much. And then again, you just bash that a bit, and it'll break. And then, yep, yeah, the final thing, aerial faith plates. These don't get n used nowhere near enough. Before, on the on the main server, I had um, I had the first version of my Warmer Titan. And I was living in both the legs, and I had aerial faith plates to get me across from one leg to the other. Pretty cool. Right. Obsidian. There's a bit of glass in there, wasn't there? the top and I believe there was three iron and one redstone. Is this maybe one or two? Just next to one. Um I'll just play with one for now. Aerial faith plate. What does this do for us? I'll show you. It's just sleep. Come on. So we'll place that and which way you place it depends which way it's gonna fire you. <laughs> As you can see that when you touch it, it fires yet. Now if you shift right click it, I believe. Is it? Oh no, just right click it, dot shift. You can set the horizontal and the vertical power and you can set if it needs a redstone so you can fire it off a button or whatever. 
As I mean, it's set to no. If it's set to yes, obviously it will. What? Did that not work? Oh, didn't press done. Okay. So now it won't fire unless I give it a redstone signal so you could use it a button to fire it. So I'll set that. So yeah, vertical power, horizontal power. I should really set this outside and uh, and use outside where we can get some good height and distance on. So uh, where do I want it? Where do I want it? Face it towards my base over there. Let's set it to its max. Let's see, it gets you quite away. Pretty cool. In lieu of stairs, if you've got like a nice open base. Whee! And um, of course, I've placed it on the on the floor. There, you can place it on the side of stuff as well. So let's place it on a vertical. There we'll do. Ah, so I faced it down there, didn't I? Um, I'll just turn it round. Can I turn it round? No, let's break it again. Oops. Let's place it trying to face it upwards. No, wrong, wrong again. Um, well, that, that, there we go. Now it's facing upwards. Set it again so it's max. Whee! So that was horizontal and vertical. If we turn the horizontal down, I've just vertical. It should shoot me straight off, just about. Ah, almost straight off. So yeah, in those stairs, you can have in, you could have it so that it shoots you up in, into like a chimney, so you you don't get off course too much. But yeah, really nice bit of kit. And I've only ever, I think I've seen Ethor use them. Um, so I used them on a base quite a few months ago. But I don't think I've ever seen anyone else use them. Um, saying that, I don't watch as many videos I used to watch because I'm quite busy these days. Um, so they're 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 pretty useful. Um, I suppose I could have it down here for getting across there a bit quicker. Oops. Yeah, that'll do. Get to this end. Ooh, look. There we go. <laughs> um, and of course you can have two facing each other so you can jump backwards and forwards. Quite funny, you can get stuck in a loop and just get kept sending in backwards and forwards. When I had a set of settlers and base, now and again a skeleton would get caught in a loop between them. So obviously I had one on each side. I had like a, I had like a 20 block gap between the two legs of the building. So I had a door with one on this block and then that one was on the next block across so this one would fire me so I landed here and then that one would fire me so I landed next to that one but now and again you get caught in like a little diagonal get stuck in a loop, quite funny um, right, that's going to be it for this episode we've covered a couple of uh, little bits uh, I need to fix some stuff as I said I've got some issues with getting backlogs and do some more bee stuff and I shall see you next time and um, so I'm going to talk to my mate who's going to sort the server out I'll see if he's there uh, if he's got any plans to get a server on the go soon so yeah as always thank you very much for watching I hope it's entertaining um, I haven't really done much in this episode just gone through stuff that I don't really know a great deal about but um, I still hope it was entertaining anyway I might actually make one of them off camera and see what it does and let you know next time uh, no promises though never actually use one but yeah I'll talk to you soon cheers Bye.